Get ready for the big revival. The real estate revival, that is. Now on 77 WABC, your New York weekend. Are you ready for the big revival? It's Rand on Real Estate. Look out! Welcome to the Big Real Estate Revival. I'm Greg Rand, your host on 77 WABC at WABCRadio.com. I'm here with Laura Smith, my co-host. How are you? Noon. Good afternoon. That, well, that helps. <laughs> well, it's great to have you. We have a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about how to play the housing market. You might have heard the housing market's going through a slump right now. A pretty serious slump. It doesn't mean you can't make a fortune on it if you learn how to play it right. That's what we're going to talk about here. We're going to show you how professional investors increase value in real estate. We're going to share with you some of the secrets of the magicians who uh, get real wealthy doing this stuff right. So we're going to get into that in some detail. We're going to take your calls. Jot the number down, 800-848-WABC. That's 800-848-9222. And here's what I want to hear from you on anything related to real estate, but specifically do you have a plan that you've been thinking about? Are you somebody who's toyed with the idea, dreamt about it, talked about it with your, uh, your spouse or significant other? Because you know you have. I mean, the bottom line is I know the world is full of people who have a passion for real estate, who have a deep belief in real estate as an asset class to build wealth because they've seen it all around them. They don't always know how. So this show, my company, Own America, my book, Crash Boom, all designed to give you all the content you could want from any medium that you're interested in to teach you how to do this. So call. Tell me about some crazy idea you have. Tell me about a market that you might be thinking about. We like to go all across the country. Most of our listeners are right here in the New York area, but we have a lot of them that are listening online. And you might be thinking about someplace miles and miles away from where you are right now. I'm going to show you how to analyze markets from a distance using some really cut, cutting edge tools that are out there on the internet these days. And we'll do that live. So call, tell us about what market you're dreaming about, and we'll sort of slice it and dice it and analyze it for you. But I'm going to start today with my favorite segment and Laura's very favorite segment, which is called <laughs> Smart People Saying Dopey Things About Real Estate. It's basically a, a media watchdog segment because, you know, housing's in the news every week and they consistently get it wrong to the negative. They consistently blow the stats uh, out of proportion and they create a lot of fear. And so this week we had um, another around another chorus of the double dip talk okay double dip double dip double dip and what's amazing about that is that there has never been a recovery in the last two years or three years and so how can there be a double dip if there's not a recovery in the middle but the source of the double dip talk this week is none other than the father of the housing meltdown my nemesis dr schiller dr robert schiller right the evil scientist from yale university um i hope I'm not crossing the line i'm gonna get lawyer letters from that but yeah, Dr. Schiller, as you may, you may recognize the name, he is the co-founder of the Case-Shiller Index, which has since become the Standard & Poor's Case-Shiller Index, giving it massive credibility out there in the marketplace. And it basically is the index that when it comes out, it spawns a million media stories, and whatever Dr. Schiller spoon feeds out there gets parroted out there by the media, and he's the one who started talking about Double Dip about six months ago, and now is talking about how his prediction from six months ago has come true, there's a few things about what he does, how he does it, and most importantly, why he does it that I want to share with you so that you can be, you can get some Teflon on you about this. There's so much negativity about the economy out there, but you know, right? You know in your heart that when there's crisis, there's opportunity. And I'm telling you, there's massive opportunity, generational opportunity in the American housing market happening right now and for the next several years. And Dr. Schiller is contributing to the negativity, which I'm going to show you how that actually plays in your favor if you have the ability to fend off his negativity, see it for what it is, uh, and then act based upon logic, not, ab not upon emotion. So first I have to set it up. The Case-Shiller Index is based upon the 20 biggest metro markets in the country. And back when, before Dr. Schiller was really famous as he is today, he made a proclamation back in 2004 that the housing market was a bubble that was going to burst. And that was the beginning of his uh, fame and fortune based upon the negative news on the housing market. What was a very predictable correction, meaning the market had gone hot and heavy for several years for a lot of reasons that we talk about on this show a lot, bad lending practices, a froth of optimism that turned down in about 2006, 2007, and the market began to correct. The market always corrects after it has a run-up, anything near that. But Dr. Schiller said it's a bubble, and so he created an index that gives you the bubble. Now, an index that is based upon the 20 biggest metro areas in the country, 
means that it includes places like Miami, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Detroit, San Diego, L.A., Atlanta. And what do those things, those places have in common? They are the hardest hit markets in the housing crisis. They're the ones that took the deepest dive from the peak back in 2007. They also happen to be the ones, with the exception of Detroit, that saw the most meteoric appreciation from 2000 until 2006 or 7. So, of course, what you hear is that the Case-Shiller 20-City Index has come down 33% from the peak. They never say that it's still up 70% from the beginning of the cycle 10 years ago. So it went up 130%, came down 30, it's still up, I'm sorry, went up 100, came down 30, it's still up 70. They don't talk about that, but it shows you from the get-go that there's a bias to the way his index is designed. And then again, last year, he says we have a double-dip housing recession coming, and then now he says the double-dip is happening right now, and his index is what he points to as the evidence to that. So he has a history here of making dire proclamations and then designing his statistics and using the media uh, amplifier to basically claim that he's right. So I'm going to play you some audio from Dr. Schiller from a few years ago before he was really famous, and then from just yesterday, actually. So first let me set the stage, and if we can play the clip, um, clip number one, Dr. Schiller, please. Middle of the Great Depression in the 1930s. And uh, the problem at that time was very clear. Why were we in a depression? It was because people perceived that we were in a depression. <laughs> it's as simple as that. If everybody thinks that the whole economy is in a bad condition, then it will be in a bad condition, because everyone will pull back on all of their expenditure plans. And all of the otherwise entrepreneurs, or many of them, will decide, well, I'd like to be an entrepreneur, but not now. I can't raise any money. Nothing can work now. And so it all becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy. So that was Dr. Schiller, before he was rich and famous, speaking in a lecture to students about the Great Depression. Now I'm going to play you Dr. Schiller from yesterday. We'll figure we'll keep this fresh, rather than making it last week's debacle, just yesterday. So Dr. Schiller, cut number two, please. The implicit in your question is the assumption that they will bottom out. That, but you don't see it. Well, we could. So you asked me, what's the next fad in clothing? I don't know. And it's, it's a fad. That's what these booms are. And maybe we won't have. Maybe the next bubble won't be in housing. So uh, it could happen. But we could also continue to see a slide in home prices for 20 years. All right. What I neglected to tell you is that the reporter asked him before that last clip, do you see a bottom coming soon? We have a double dip. You called it. Do you see a bottom coming soon? And his response was, well, I don't know. You know, I, I can't really tell if we have a bottom coming soon. There may never be a bottom again. And he actually said that implicit in your question is the idea that we may ever see a bottom again. And then it referred to the fact that you're asking me when the next bubble's going to be, as if there's only bubbles and bursts. There's no stable economies in between, stable markets in between, which is what we're headed for right now. So it's infuriating to me, number one, that but first of all, if you saw the clip that I just played you audio, he's grinning ear to ear. He loves this because he knows that he has demonstrated an ability to drive consumer confidence. He said in the first clip, he understands that when people believe things are going to get worse, those things are going to get worse. That's what created the length of the Great Depression. That's what's created the length and part of the Great Recession. Certainly the housing recession is driven very, very hard by that kind of negativity. And he broke new ground this week by saying things like, we're going to see 10 to 25% more decline in home prices. It'll be 10, it won't be 25. But he said 10 to 25, and he projected that maybe, you know, maybe we're going to see 20 years of a slump of the housing market. He drives me crazy. That's not going to happen. That has never happened. What he's predicting is something that has never happened in modern history. But he makes me nervous because he likes to predict things. That he likes to put his back into trying to make those things happen. And the one thing that I'll tell you after we get back from the break is what I think his motivation is, Dr. Schiller. And we're going to go to a break now. But when we get back, you'll hear more about that. We'll take your calls. We'll talk about how to create value in real estate investing. So stay with us. Knowledge is power. 77 WABC. Welcome back to Rand on Real Estate. I'm Greg Rand, your host on 77 WABC. We're broadcasting from the Small Business Authority Studios in Midtown Manhattan. We're also available online at wabcradio.com. I'm here with Laura Smith. How are you? Hi, great, always. Great Thank to you. have you. 
So we want to take your calls. Take this number down, 800-848-WABC or 800-848-9222. Remember, if you're thinking, dreaming, pondering the idea of trying to play this housing market right so you can secure your financial future using American housing, I'm the guy that can help you do that. So give us a ring. Come see us at our website, ownamerica.com. That's own America as in you can own America. I mean, how awesome is that? You can actually buy pieces of this country. They're always for sale. In fact, they're on sale right now. You know this. <laughs> you know this. You know this crisis means opportunity. So give us a call. And in a couple minutes, I'm going to get into <clears throat> how professional investors approach creating wealth with individual properties. But I want to just finish up on the conversation with my buddy, Dr. Schiller. Dr. Schiller, his motivation. Why would a guy who obviously loves his country, why, why would he do, why would he knowingly drive the housing market down? Well, let me tell you about Macro Markets. Macro Markets is a company that he co-founded. It's got a lot, lot riding on this. And it is a company that, well, I'm going to read you their mission according to their website. It says, Macro Markets LLC is a financial technology company on a mission to add liquidity to valuable economic interests and important asset classes, blah, blah, blah. What does that mean? They are creating creative, quote, our principal focus is the creation of innovative financial instruments to facilitate investment and risk management. Translation into English, they are creating poker chips, like they did on Wall Street a few years back, where they created derivative instruments, right? Ways for people to trade fast and furious in the slow-moving housing market. That encouraged a lot of crazy lending practices. That encouraged a lot of leverage. And it gave us the financial meltdown. Now, one of the things inherent in the plan for macro markets is to enable people to short the housing market. Now that terminology means they're betting on it going down. Historically, if you're betting on the housing market, you're buying property, you're betting on it going up. <clears throat> you're betting on the value increasing. Dr. Schiller wants people to be able to trade and bet on it going down. And what he's essentially done in the last several years is prove that not only does the market go down, but that he can help it go down that he can use his power in the media and his prestige and his statistics to create fear, drive that fear into the hearts of Americans, and drive the housing market down because it is a consumer-driven marketplace. So why is this important? Because when you hear anything in the media that is telling you, because you're going to start talking about this, 20-year slump in the housing market, don't believe it. Don't believe if you own a home that you're going to see a 20-year slump. It's not going to happen. You're going to see a bottom in home prices over the next couple of years. We're going to have a period of a few years of flattening of the market, and then we're going to have the big revival. That's what this show is all about, the big real estate revival. It ain't tomorrow, but it's coming because it always does. It's America. It's a roof over your head in America. Demand for this product does not ever go away. Population is increasing. People want to live under a roof. That's the fundamental. When he talks about it being a fad, like the latest social, uh, the latest fashion fad, it's idiotic. It's, it's demoralizing. And I want you not to be affected by it. Because you'll see that he's having an impact, no question. But is he going to win? Okay? Is he succeeding? I would tell you no. And what I'll point to is a study that came out a couple of weeks ago by a company called Move Inc. Move Inc. are the people that run Realtor.com. So big major player in the housing market on the web. And what they did is they decided to create a survey where they have lots of people, millions a day, that are on their website looking at houses. And they said, hey, if you're looking at houses, do you want to take a survey? And they asked them, are you an investor or are you looking to buy a home to live in? And they got about a thousand of each. And what they found, two very interesting stats. One is that investors are three times more likely, people who are self-proclaimed investors, three times more likely <coughs> three times more likely to buy in the next two years than home buyers. Home buyers are spooked. Investors are juiced right now because they know the opportunity is big. They also found, and this is really gratifying to me, that 59% of the people that said they were on the website searching for investment property, 59% were first timers, newbies in the investor market. So what it means is the negativity in the media, the public pretty much gets it now. They pretty much understand that if it bleeds, it leads. And when you hear these kind of negative things, they may be accurate in some circumstances, i.e. the market is going to come down some more before it goes back up again. But none of this long-term catastrophic nonsense. People have the faith. They have the trust. And if in your heart you feel both, you've got the faith and trust, but you also have the fear, I want to speak to the faith and trust side because you're correct. That's the part of you that is based on logic, based on experience, and not based upon the media drivel that is being shoved down your throat every single day on TV, in radio, not here, of course, and in print. So stay tough. 
and think about real estate as a way to secure your financial future. Call us at 800-848-9222. Tell me more about what your plans are, and let me start the conversation now. I always try to give a lesson in here because we're a training company. We teach investors on ownamerica.com. We teach them how to build wealth in real estate the correct way. And the reason I say the correct way is that there's a lot of education out there. You might see it on Late Night Cable. A lot of education that teaches you how to do it the wrong way. Because late night cable is all about getting you to pick up the phone and buy some stuff. So they'll tell you you can get washboard abs without ma- breaking a sweat. And they'll tell you that you can get rich quick in real estate. Neither one of those two things happen, but they'll sell you tapes. Our program is all about not just buy and hold, but buy, improve, and hold. See, the buy and flip thing, that can work, but you can't get rich doing that. The buy and flip thing is all about, there's one thing basically wrong with it. And that is that... You've all heard about buy low, sell high, right? Everyone knows if you're going to invest, you buy low and sell high. Buying and flipping real estate is buy low, sell low. Like, how does that make any sense? You buy, and then as soon as you can, you unload it. That is not the way professional investors, by and large, do it. The vast majority buy and hold, but there's that middle part, buy, improve, and hold. So how do they do that? How do professional investors find a place where there's opportunity, find a property where there's opportunity, improve that property, and see the kind of astronomical value um, that they can get from it. <clears throat> I'm going to take a call here, actually. You know, we have Michael from Dutchess County. So before I jump into the detail, we have somebody here calling. Michael from Dutchess, how are you, Michael? I'm doing great. Thanks for picking up. No problem. So what's on your mind? Well, I sold the business. Uh, I got a yada. Um, I'm debating, like, real estate, fine know that well insurance business insurance industry getting into that as a means of investment so what do you think but by, by opening up an insurance agency like selling what kind of insurance life insurance so casualty insurance oh, yes the full rack the full rack okay well listen the insurance business is a pretty busy field and I you know I know something about it because my family business is in the insurance business but the reason why I didn't do a show called Rand on Insurance, the reason why I'm directing everybody's attention towards real estate is that you go into the insurance business, and it might be perfect for you, Michael, so don't, you know, don't take this as gospel, but you're out there competing against a whole lot of other people who are doing things basically the same way you are, and you're trying to find a niche. When you deal with real estate investing, when you get into the real estate business the way that I'm talking about it here, where you look for properties, you acquire them, you hold them, and you build wealth that way, there is enormous amounts of creativity and there's enormous possibility of finding little gems that everybody else is overlooking. Mm-hmm. All right? And so, like, I'll give you an example. I mentioned that professional investors view this as a, a way to buy, improve, and hold. There are basically, I want you to you visualize a mixing board. I'm here in a radio studio, right? Right through the glass over there are the guys that run this show. And they've got these big boards with all these dials, right? You can picture that. It's so dials that, as you turn them up, the volume goes up. Now, the way professional investors approach building wealth in real estate is f- there's like five or six dials. They try to see if they can move up just a little bit each time. Okay, a little tiny bit on, for example, buying at the right time. I talk a lot here about how now is the right time. Next year, the year after, the next few years is phenomenal timing. So if they buy at the right time, then they've got the market cycle working in their favor in the future. The second thing is buying in the right place. All right, buying someplace where, like you're in Dutchess County. Dutchess County is a metro suburb of New York City, okay? It's not going away. New York's economic engine is not going away, particularly now because we have a governor who's actually fixing the state, which is beautiful. But Dutchess County being a high-value market, meaning every mile you drive south from Dutchess into New York City, the prices go up, right? The value in Dutchess right. County is phenomenal. You go, you go 15 minutes south, and the prices are up 15%. You go in 45 minutes south, and the prices are triple. So you have, like, the best value real estate in the New York metro area, and that economic engine is so powerful. I've been saying that for years, by the way. What's that? I've been saying that for years. Yeah, well, you've been right for years. And the, the fact is, is that Dutchess County is correcting. It's overcorrecting right now. That's one of the impacts of all this negativity is the market is now below the trend line, oh, hey. and it's going to be going deeper. I hope you don't mind. I'd like to interrupt you, and I'd like to plug part of Dutchess for real estate people. Mm-hmm. They're still ahead of the curve. Even during the boom, it was... Head of the curve, so to speak. Meaning that it didn't get. It, I mean, Dutchess didn't go crazy. Well, Clinton Corners. Okay. Uh, Rhinebeck, little window there, and the bloated two hundred twenty dollars per square foot cost it and never hit it. They right. So you didn't. You didn't have that big of a party. That's true. Yeah. That, that the yeah. northern Dutchess market Rhinebeck didn't have that crazy of a party. 
Yeah, when I bought there, I got four acres, 2,000 square feet for under 200. And yeah. I was, I'm exactly a mile off the golden area, Taconic. So the golden area for, the, for Dutchess County, Taconic north-south, within two miles east-west of it. See, this you is my point, anywhere Michael. anywhere in there, regardless of single-family, multi, you're, you're golden, really. So here's my point, Michael. You could get into the insurance business, and you're, you're competing with GEICO, and you're competing with Allstate. You're competing with all these major players, plus a gazillion local players. But you know something about that little piece of dirt up there in Clinton Corners. Right. You know something about it, and you can be one of the world's foremost experts on that little piece of dirt, that piece of marketplace where there are diamonds in your backyard there that the smartest people on Wall Street will never know as much as you already know about Clinton Corners. And so if you put your entrepreneurial hat on and say, knowledge, intelligence, scrapping and digging and finding the gems nobody else sees. That's what this is all about. Diamonds in your backyard. So thank you for the call, Michael. You can always email me at greg at ownamerica.com. Um, we can talk more about that. But I appreciate the call, and I hope you decide to move towards real estate because it sounds like you have a passion for it. All right, this is Rand on Real Estate. If you're on the line, stay there. I'm going to get right back to you as soon as we make the, the, uh, come back from the break. This is Rand on Real Estate, 77 WABC, back in a minute. All right, welcome back to Rand on Real Estate. I'm Greg Rand on 77 WABC. My website is called ownamerica.com. My book is called Crash Boom. And we're all about building wealth in real estate. The phones are lighting up. I'm thrilled. Everybody who's on hold, stay on hold. We're going to get to everybody. Uh, very excited about the, uh, the potential out there. And I want to set up our next call uh, by saying I was telling you there are five or six dials on the mixing board of wealth of real estate. That's a good, that's a good phrase. There. The a mixing nice board analogy. of wealth, right? Nice one. Talk about buying at the right time. Talk about buying in the right place, a place that's promising. I mentioned we had a call from Dutchess County. Dutchess County is a suburb of Manhattan. That's all good. Then there's buying in a discounted market, finding a great place that also, for one reason or another, is getting beat up right now. That's one of the things that's really amazing about this housing crisis, that there's almost no place in the country that's untouched. And there's a market we're going to talk about next um, with our next caller that I think is exactly in that kind of position. So hello, Joe from Orange County. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah, you know, Mr. Rand, I, I wouldn't buy anything right now for the very simple reason that um, there, there's so much still out in the gray market out there. I, I presume you've talked about the gray market in the past. And, I mean, there's a new trend towards people, A, renting because they're uncertain about their job. Why be tied down to a house? Right. And, uh, you know, just, I just don't see an end to this with the, with the, the gray market where banks are, are so that things don't bottom out. They're putting more and more of their foreclosed homes, you know, in portfolio and not announcing them. If they drop them all at the same time now, we'd forget it. So, Joe, you're talking, when you say gray market, you're talking about the shadow inventory, right? You're talking yeah, about the, the... Did I say that? I'm sorry. You know what? You're right. Shadow. That's no, I, I like gray market also. It's good. It, okay. But basically what he's talking about is that there are a lot of, there's an inventory of supply it's kind of hanging out there in the clouds waiting to hit the market. And it's banks that have taken properties back, banks that have not taken the properties back, but the owners stopped paying the mortgage a while ago, and so they're either going to take it back or, or, or something else is going to happen in the future. The government has been bottlenecking the process of, of getting through the foreclosure inventory. That's why I say that I do believe home values are going to go down yeah. this year, next year, probably not any further than that. But Lord only knows, with the, the way that they act in Washington, they might come up with a great solution solution that causes more problems in the future. But, so why would a guy like me tell you to buy now when I'm saying at the same time prices are likely to come down even further? A couple yeah, of I reasons. Mean, you're going to have to have 30% down because I mean, yeah. in, in the first quarter of this year, uh, you know, housing prices went down by people's home values in this area. I live in Orange County, not uh, too far from Dutchess, went down by 4%. I mean, you know, where, where are you going to find the bottom of the market? And, I, I mean, unless you find a haunted house. Well, I think, I think you're going to find the bottom of the market in 2012. But here's the reason why I would recommend buying now, even if prices go down a little bit. First of all, I'm talking about a 10 or 15-year hold, okay? 10 or 15, I, I have quite a bit of property in Orange County. Orange County is just north of Rockland. It's about maybe 45 minutes northwest of Manhattan. It's a gorgeous place, and it has been getting hurt especially hard by the housing crisis relative to the other metro area suburbs because there was a lot of single-family home development that went on during the boom up there that when the music stopped, there was too many houses that had been built, and it dragged properties down, I believe, below the trend line. So if you, see, if you buy a property today in Orange County and you see the property value go down 5% between now and a year from now, maybe that bums you out. But what you just saw 
is an overcorrection. That 5% dip is erroneous. That's not real, okay? What that's going to do is create a snapping back of the market. The more these markets go below the trend line, meaning real estate wants to appreciate according to a very steady curve. If it goes over it, it's going to come back below or back to the trend line. If it goes below it, it's going to snap back up again. The, the issue you mentioned about renters is exactly what I'm talking about also. Rental household creation, according to Harvard, and you know, I don't mess with Harvard. I mess with Yale, but I don't mess with Harvard. Mm. According to Harvard, they just came out with a study. They do it every year. They're showing that during this recession, some 4 million rental households have been created. So we know home ownership's going down, meaning the percentage of Americans that are owning homes are going down. The percentage that are demanding rentals is going up, and it's driving rents up. So it's never been a better time to be a landlord. Yes, you have to put 30% down. Yes, you maybe want to put 40 or 50% down. It takes money to make money in this game, no doubt about it. But you found a place that is a New York suburb. You found a place that is getting especially hard hit by this recession right now. And I have total confidence in Orange County. In fact, I'm buying there now that it's going to snap back. And I couldn't care less if it goes down a little bit next year or the year after because I have my eye on the horizon 10 or 12 years out. Well, let me ask you this question then. <clears throat> you know, and I have a, uh, I, you know, I have, I have a son that I want to make, uh, you know, investments for down the road. And, uh, you know, the only thing is there aren't that, mo that many multifamily dwellings out there. Uh, True. There, I don't think there are that many for renters now, but are they going to start building them? And then I would think those would probably be a good investment, at least in the short term. I mean, housing prices had always been very expensive here. And... Um, well, I'm glad you brought up multifamilies, Joe, because they happen to be one of my favorite, not one of my absolute favorite asset class in housing. And the reason is a couple of things. One, the same Harvard study that I cited over the last couple of years has shown that while rental household creation, rental demand is through the roof, yeah. vacancies in big apartment complexes is actually up, meaning there's a lot of apartments that aren't occupied because the people who are going into renting now, yeah. they want to live in a house and at least a two- or three-family house. And Orange County, there's a lot of building, as you, as you know, right? A lot of, lot of single-family home developments, a lot of McMansion developments got oh, built in Orange County over the last 10 years. What the entire national home builder industry got obsessed with was exactly that for 10 years. And almost nobody was building two-family, three-family, and four-family houses. Right. So there is a shortage. Yeah. So you go back to supply and demand. If you've got a demand for rentals in houses, one-family, two-family, three- or four-family, simultaneous with a total shortage of new construction of those those types of dwellings what you have is demand for your rental now to cover your expenses and make your cash flow now plus demand for your property when you want to exit some five ten or fifteen years from now is there zoning for that though i mean really i mean you know <laughs> if you look at orange county man i live on a, on a street where for the most part you know the homes are all single family homes right. are they are going are they going are they going to allow multifamily dwellings maybe not uh, you're, listen, you have to check the local zoning i mean in in Newburgh, in middletown yeah. in in monroe in the downtown areas of orange county yeah. they've got the zoning there right now but you know what i would check into that because when you go that's the whole point you know you go into orange county become an expert on those little pockets of america that people aren't necessarily paying attention to find out where the zoning is single family and multifamily dwelling and think about the idea of you're gonna make an investment partner with a developer who's gonna build a couple of multifamilies and you wind up owning one at the end and I listen Joey thank you for the call I hope that you keep your confidence up as soon as this market bottoms out and confidence comes back you will have lost the upper hand in the negotiation. Right now, buyer is king in the negotiation, which is another one of the reasons why you don't wait to the very bottom. You wait to the be just before the very bottom because that's when the, uh, the sellers are the most desperate, actually. Okay, thanks. So thank you for the call. I appreciate it. We have a break. Another break? Uh, in about three minutes. I got about three minutes. All right, so I can take Dave from Morris County, New Jersey. How you doing, Dave? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for calling. What's on your mind? Yeah, yeah. I own a uh, couple of uh, uh, multifamilies. But in terms of other real estate um, investments at the time with tax amounts just being, you know, just out of control and everything else, it's very difficult to turn profits nowadays. Years ago, I, I used to. Now it's just showing money, at, you know, taking money out of my own pocket. Yeah, you guys have had a bad run in New Jersey. You've had a bad run in New Jersey. It seems like it might be over finally with Governor Christie over there putting a lid on it, but doesn't mean he's going to roll back property taxes. And so what you've got there may be as bad as it's going to get, but it's pretty tough. Although, by the way, come take a look at Westchester County and you probably feel a little bit better about Morris County. <laughs>
because yeah, we they're, get... they're raising the you know the taxes faster than you can raise the rent. They got rent control. At the same time, you know, you have to go file a grievance, do this, that, and the other thing, and it's, it's just it's just not right. So I'm at the point where you know when things start. I don't know when they're going to get better. You're saying 2012. I really don't want to wait that long. But I'm looking to just unload everything, and you know, just I don't even just put my money in the uh, in the bank at some simple account. Leave I know I'm making something. I just take the money in my pocket every month. So you have equity in some of these properties now, and you're losing money on a current basis. Is that the issue? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's chipping away at your at your winnings at this point is is the idea. Yeah, there's, and there's, you know, try all different things. The way it's just not it's just not working anymore, but. Well, here's something I want to. Years ago, it was great, and now it's just it's completely changed. Well, you know what? Let me throw something out to you. This is something that a lot of people in major metro areas are starting to look outside of their local market. Now, I'm a big believer in buy where you know, buy where you can keep your eyes on it, right? Exactly. Um, and so we talk a lot about buying proximity, but sometimes when the proximity, meaning where you live and do business, is just not viable in the in the near term. Like I spent uh, part of the week in Dallas. Uh, and I was down there speaking at a conference by a company called Home Investors of America. And Home Investors, you may have heard of them, the We Buy Ugly Houses people. You ever yes, see those billboards? Okay. Right. Yes, so yes, exactly. I keynoted their conference, and they are what they call turnkey investment providers. That's a new term for a new industry where they buy property that needs to get rehabbed, they rehab it very efficiently, and they sell it to investors and they manage it for the investors. So it's, there's a time now that if you liquidate a Dave right now, and you had your equity, a savings account's fine, but start to open your mind up to the idea that, you know, Memphis, Tennessee is looking good. Houston, right. Texas is looking good. There are other places in the country where the markets, like those two markets have been very stable. But like Atlanta, Atlanta's getting slammed right now, getting slammed. But the migration patterns into Atlanta are phenomenal. Same thing with Florida, but the price points and the rents are such, you could buy a single family home five miles inland from Fort Myers for 50 grand. Make a profit wow. on a current basis. Yeah, exactly. And the turnkey investment providers that I've been meeting all across the country, they're managing hundreds and hundreds of homes. So adding a couple on for you is no big deal. They're very efficient. They have great technology systems. You know, your phone will beep when you get a, you know, they, when they change a light bulb. Your phone will beep. You look down and you see light bulb got changed. So it's a new world out there in terms of being able to open up the national marketplace. And so, you know, come on to ownamerica.com. Send me an okay, email. Yeah. I'll introduce you to some of these folks. And, uh, and maybe it'll open up the scope for you so you can get out of the New York metro area and find better cash flow elsewhere. All right, All right so thank, thank you for the call, Dave. Uh, this is Rand on Real Estate, WABC Radio. We have to go to a break. When we get back, we're going to finish up this conversation about how professional investors increase value and take one or two more calls. So give us a call. Back in a minute. Welcome back to Randon Real Estate. My name is Greg Rand. I'm your host on 77 WABC and WABCradio.com. We're here talking about building wealth in the American housing market. You know that it's the most prolific wealth-creating vehicle on planet Earth. You know this. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And let me show you how professional investors play this market because it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. It's very creative, very, very entrepreneurial. And I was walking you through this mixing board of real estate wealth that I was talking about, that there are these dials, that if you can move each dial up a tiny little bit, you don't have to get a home run on every one of these different facets. So if you buy at the right time, if you buy in a strong place with good future potential, if you buy in a place that has that potential, but also is getting smacked around right now by the recession in any particular way, so you can buy under market, a discounted market, if you can then buy a discounted property, Okay, this is a lot of people, a lot of people jump to this one. They say, oh, I want to buy a foreclosure. You know, I want to buy a foreclosure. I can get a $100,000 property for 70 grand. Won't that be great? And then I'll flip it and that'll be wonderful. Well, <clears throat> we're not going to want to flip it because as we said before, you don't buy low and sell low. You buy low and sell high. You buy that baby. You put a tenant in. You make cash flow along the way. And then you realize major profits as the market revives maybe a decade from now. But this idea of moving each dial. So the discounted property, they're... There are a lot of people out there that look at that as the prime focus, and I actually sort of get away from it because the truth is is that you don't need to. Professional investors do not look for a steal. They look to buy well. Again, nothing has to be a home run. You could buy a property that's in foreclosure from a bank, sure. You could buy a property that's a short sale. You probably heard that term. If you don't know what it means, it means somebody owes more on their mortgage than the property is worth, and they want to sell it. But let's say you owe 150 grand on a house. It's only worth 100 now. Well, the bank has to let you out of that fifty grand, 
or make some kind of negotiation with you to let that last $50,000 that you owe somehow disappear. And when they sell that property as a short sale, the person coming in and buying it may in fact be able to get a, a pretty decent price. And the reason is the home seller doesn't really care that much what it sells for. They just want to get out. They're not walking away from that closing with a nickel. So they kind of want it. They don't care so much what they're going to sell it for. The bank cares, but the person making the decision for the bank is in like Omaha, Nebraska in a call center. Okay? Mm -hmm. They don't know the market. And so at the end of the day, they're relying on you know, the free market to work. If your offer comes in and your offer is the best offer at the time, you may very well be able to buy a property that's worth hundred grand for maybe 75 or 80 or 90, and that is good enough, okay? Because you're only trying to move each one of these dials up a little smidge. Buy at a good time, buy in a good place, buy a discounted market, buy a discounted property. And then the big one, increasing value. Professional investors don't just buy and hold. They buy, improve, and hold. And there are four basic categories that they use to try to find ways to increase value. All right? And by the way, I learned this from watching commercial investors, really, really wealthy people that you probably never heard of that are quietly becoming multi, multi, multi millionaires and more by virtue of applying these standards and these principles to commercial investment. What I've done is boiled them down and applied them to residential real estate because I'm more excited about Everyday people like me and you who want to get wealthy in real estate can't afford a, multi, you know, a big, huge strip mall or something like that, but you can't afford to buy a house. And the four ways that people increase value, number one is the obvious one, condition. You buy a piece of junk, okay? You buy something that hasn't been kept up, that's allowed to get dilapidated, hasn't been maintained well, and a lot of professional investors just get really good at working with contractors to very quickly and very efficiently renovate that property, rehab the property. I mentioned Home Investors in the last segment, that national franchise company that I'm becoming friendly with. They're really, really good at buying pieces of junk and turning them into habitable properties that can be rented out easily for a profit. And it's not that complicated. You just decide in advance what the counters are going to be. You, you, you do a very, very good job of triaging the property, meaning I need to know if the plumbing's right. I need to know if the electrical's right. I need to know if the windows and the heating systems are right, if the bathrooms and kitchens are right. And I have to be able to evaluate very quickly what is going to be required in terms of dollars and cents to get this thing fixed up. And if a place requires, if you can keep it simple, if you could buy a property for $20,000 less than it's worth because nobody wants it and it costs only ten grand to have that be back to what it should be worth again, you just made $10,000. So you bought well and you managed to, by virtue of improving condition, increase the value of that property. Number two I already talked about. The REO, the short sale, the situation where the seller is looking to get out and you have an opportunity to be a, the right buyer at the right time in the right place and be able to increase the value of the property simply by buying it low. But these are the last two that I like the most. Improvements in tenancy. All right, there are a lot of properties out there that have renters in place that have not seen their rent go up in years. Okay, it all has to be is a nice landlord. Somebody says, oh, they're nice people. I don't want to increase the rent. Well, you know what? I'm a nice guy too, but I'm going to increase that rent because the market calls for it. Rents are going up. You can buy a property that is under market in rent, buy it for what it's worth right now based upon that rental income, and then do a couple of little improvements to the property physically, repaint it, refloor it, put a couple of appliances in, and then tell the tenant, by the way, instead of 1200 a month, it's going to be 1500 a month now, and if they don't want to stay, they can go. It's a free country. You'll find somebody else, and you can increase the value simply by getting a higher-paying tenant in there. And then finally, and I'm going to go quickly on this one. This is a complicated concept called adaptive reuse. Adaptive reuse means you look at a property and say, what could this property be different than it is right now? We talked in the last segment to a caller, Joe from Orange County, who asked about multifamily properties in Orange County. Is there zoning that allows a multifamily house to get built on that lot? Multifamily houses are going to command more rent per square foot than a single family house. That is a reuse of that property. Another category, and I've done this myself, you buy a piece of property, a three-bedroom house that has a den, you convert that den to a fourth bedroom. In most cases, that property is going to be worth more immediately by virtue of you doing nothing more than putting a closet in the den and calling it a bedroom. So I hope you found that valuable. This is Greg Rand. You're listening to Rand on Real Estate on 77 WABC. Come and see me at ownamerica.com. We have a free class called The Art of Real Estate Investing. Free. Go on the website, take the class, 
contact me. Let's talk. Let's get to know each other. Let me help you create wealth in American real estate and secure your financial future. And don't forget about your fabulous book, Crash Boom, avail- available everywhere. Yeah, available everywhere. I've seen it now in the front the front table at Barnes & Noble. So people are buying nice. this book. You know, Crash Boom, it's all about, we know it's going to get better. Uh, awesome. Well, this hour was sponsored by Own America, and we thank you for that. We'll be right back after this. Living Better with Laura Smith. Don't go anywhere. Thanks a lot, Greg Rand. You're, Thank you. you're a genius.